abiondemand.com. Automotive training you can receive anywhere, anytime. Your online training starts here. Two things. If you got a rolling idle, you may want to keep one in stock. I'll be honest with you. It sounds cheesy to say, but you can pick these up. Not that expensive. And in this case, you remove it, put it on. That'll help you make sure that you don't have a rolling idle. The next thing is fuel rail pressure. You may get a vehicle that you will command the rail pressure, and you may not go over, let's say, 21,000. You need to go over 20, 21,000. What could be the cause also? Maybe you got great lift pump pressure and volume, but it could also be the cascade valve. The cascade valve is this little guy that has kind of a nut, has like, it looks like a ball bearing on the tip. That is the cascade valve. That is designed to maintain your crankcase pressure inside this injection pump. So some of that lift pump pressure and volume will go into the center of the injection pump, in other words, the crankcase of the pump, to actually lubricate it. That cascade valve is maintaining that pressure in that crankcase. So if it's stuck open, it's going to leak all that fuel lift pump pressure back to the return. So what should you do? Well, there is specification from Bosch to actually measure the total return off the injection pump. But what you can do simply is simply disconnect the improp or the FCA assembly while the engine is idling. Immediately it should, it should rise above 20,000 PSI. If it doesn't, that means you either have A, a leak in the system, which we already discussed, how you can make sure you got a leak in the rails, or you can actually have a bad injection pump. But you got to keep in mind that who else could be leaking is the cascade valve. Now, Bosch and other manufacturers tell you to remove the cascade valve and crank the engine over or enable the pump while you're cranking so the engine won't start, so obviously disable the injectors. And what you're going to do is see what actually comes out of that injection pump. You got to keep in mind that if you're going to sell the customer a set of injectors, you got to look at the rail. You got to look at the injection pump because if there is debris there, you're going to get contaminated injectors right off the bat. You know, brand new in reman injector or reman injectors, you're going to contaminate them. So don't just replace injectors and tubes. You got to make sure that the system is clean, which includes the fuel filter. So make sure you actually change that fuel filter. And, and if you're complaining about the high cost, quit doing that because if you're going to give warranty for your job, you need to stipulate, hey, we need to change that fuel filter. And if you don't, that's going to contaminate the system. But while you have it disassembled, again, verify that there is no contamination. But for rolling idle, once again, you can have the improp. The cascade valve can also be leaking, so make sure it's not leaking. But a quick test you can do is disconnect, see if you reach that rail pressure desired. For those of you that are novices, what the heck am I talking about? In other words, imagine you're driving the truck and it's get, and under load, it sets a low rail pressure code, meaning that the rail pressure is dropping. What that means is that under load, you're not getting that desired rail pressure. And let's say it's commanding 22,000. It's not getting 22, maybe it's getting 19. So in this case, it could be a leak in the rail, but it could also be the injection pump. So again, disconnect that improp and let's see if we got adequate pressure coming in.